far out in the South Pacific, there's a tropical island paradise. Lush rainforests cover steep volcanic peaks and vibrant coral reefs hug the picture-perfect coastline. It's a beautiful place. Known as the Islands of Sacred Earth, the territory of American Samoa is one of the United States' most remote outposts. Samoa's 3,000-year-old culture is thought to be Polynesia's oldest. There's a song in American Samoa, they say, we are the people from the sun. People here in American Samoa, they're very good people, friendly people. We have such an intact traditional culture here. Here in the Pacific Islands, coral reefs are so integral to the culture. Every facet of life in a Pacific Island is touched by reefs in some way. The reefs in American Samoa are highly diverse. We have over 250 known species of coral in the territory. Some of the largest coral is actually found here, which is something very unique. While coral reefs around the world are in serious decline, American Samoa's reefs have so far been relatively resilient in the face of local and global stressors. It's something that we continuously monitor because that could change at any time. This is almost like a living classroom that we can come and study and then take that information somewhere else that maybe is suffering more quickly. So we can learn a lot from here. What makes the territory's coral reefs more resilient than others? And how might this help corals that are in decline elsewhere? Major funding for this program was provided by the Bachelor Foundation, encouraging people to preserve and protect America's underwater resources, and by the Arthur Vining Davis Foundations, strengthening America's future through education. Additional funding was provided by the William J. and Tina Rosenberg Foundation, and by the Do Unto Others Trust. Located halfway between Hawaii and New Zealand, the U.S. territory of American Samoa is home to America's only national marine sanctuary and national park south of the equator. The National Marine Sanctuary of American Samoa is located in the equator of the Polynesian's oldest culture. It's about five hours south of Hawaii by plane and it spans over 13,000 square miles, making it one of the largest as well. To better understand and protect the sanctuary's spectacular coral reefs, research coordinator Valerie Brown is implementing a monitoring program to document the reef's condition and any changes that might occur over time. And to be able to provide a response if we see some sort of acute impact. It's really important, especially as reefs are changing so quickly, to be able to adaptively manage the reef ecosystem and protected areas. Scientists conduct monthly surveys on the reefs in the sanctuary areas around the territory's main island, Tutuila. we're doing that, we're being pulled behind the boat on tow boards. So we're looking for coral bleaching, coral disease, crown of thorn starfish, or snail predation, and marine debris. Each year, the sanctuary science team also conducts in-depth surveys of the reef along predetermined transect lines. 
Hana, she's looking at coral species, their size, and also their health for each of the corals within quadrats in each of our transects. While she's doing that, I am taking benthic quadrat photos, so we are getting photographic documentation of the bottom, and then we're able to post-process that and look at coral cover, algae cover, and that gives us a really good understanding of what's happening with the coral communities and the overall reef health. So are there changes in algae, changes in coral, changes in the size structure of the coral community? In addition, Valerie is taking hundreds of photos of the reef that can later be stitched together into a large photo mosaic. And that gives us a 3D model of the reef that we're hopefully gonna be able to use to assess structural complexity and then look for changes over time. And the monitoring program doesn't just rely on visual data. In the remote and pristine Fangatele Bay, the experts installed an ecological acoustic recorder that captures the soundscape of the reef. What this does is it captures all the noises on the reef 24 hours a day. Similar to walking into a forest and you hear birds, if you dive into a reef, you should hear shrimp and fish all making noise. There's snapping and there's grunting. The noises on a reef can really tell you a lot about whether it's healthy or whether it's impacted. It can also tell us if there's vessels coming into the reef. And so having that information will improve our ability to manage reefs and to understand some of the things that are happening when we're not there. Just how valuable it is to monitor changes on a reef over time is evident in the village of Aua, across from the Pango Pango Harbor. So the Aua transect is actually the longest coral reef survey transect uh, that's resurveyed in the world. So it's a really exciting thing for the territory. And in 1917, Alfred Mayer set this transect up and we've monitored it ever since. It's something that we are proud of because it's right in our village. We're trying to preserve this coral here because it's very important. It's 247 meters long, this transect. And it runs from the shore to the crest. So it's a huge area of this reef flat. Since Alfred Mayer first started his monitoring, this reef flat has been impacted by a variety of stressors. After World War II, the harbor had a significant increase in development. We had two canneries come in, we had dredging happening, we had different sedimentation and pollution. So we can track those changes in those coral reef communities. And we didn't see any recovery after that for about 40 years. With the environmental regulation, they started diverting the pipes or the wastewater more out the harbor. So by 1990, we started to see the recovery of the reef. And that's a good sign that our efforts to manage our water quality is working. Switching from septic tanks to municipal sewer lines will further improve the water quality in the bay. When I became a representative almost 14 years ago, one of my goals is to have a sewer line for this village, never was before. Now, half of my village is already functioning on the sewer line and we're gonna finish. The coral is very, very dear to my heart. The Coral Reef Advisory Group, a collaboration of seven local agencies, is working closely with the Aua Village and Village Council to protect and restore the reef. This village is well known for the warriors in the old days. We're gonna to work together on coral restoration. I like to see a healthy coral reef. I love this village. That's why I try to do the best for our village. Samoans have their own creation story of a god they believe in. Tangaloa Langi was his name. People were actually asked by Tangaloa to really take care of these special places, the ocean, because these places will sustain them throughout their livelihood. And the Samoan people are very much dependent on the ocean for their food source. There are a number of reasons why reefs may be doing better in American Samoa than elsewhere. 
the islands are far removed from any other landmass, and there is minimal industry or tourism. We don't have much uh, major development uh, in the territory. Our land is protected through our land tenure system, which are the Matais, chiefs of the family, who are caretaker. Lands on the island are not for sale. Lands are assigned to family members to build their homes or cultivate. So that's sort of protected, you know, these lands from outsiders and all the development. So that help minimize direct impact from land to sea. While local managers can't control the global stressors caused by climate change, they can help reduce localized impacts that harm the coral reefs. Things like pollution coming from villages, sewage that's not being managed properly, illegal dumping that may be getting into the ocean, and then also managing the watersheds above the coral reefs, which we find is a huge contributor to stressors. So that when things on a global scale, like you know, rising sea temperatures or sea level, or the frequency of cyclones increases, they're in a better position to protect themselves from that. Thriving reefs aren't American Samoa's only claim to fame. The territory is also home to some of the world's largest documented corals. Found in the waters off Tau, about 70 miles east of Tutuila. It's also known as the Valley of the Giants. In 1995, scientists described the first famous coral colony, which is located inside the National Marine Sanctuary. It is uh, recorded to be around 500 years old. Uh, it's also known as Big Mama. This is a very large, massive Parietes colony that is about 23 feet tall and 135 feet around. When you're up next to it, it kind of dwarfs you. It's as big as a house almost. And so it's just spectacular. It's made it through these bleaching events recently. And overall, it's in really good shape. And it turns out, Big Mama isn't the only large coral in the Valley of the Giants. Recently, the National Marine Sanctuary, along with the National Park Service and the local agencies through the Coral Reef Advisory Group, conducted a survey around Tau to look for other large corals. And so we towed all around the western, north, and eastern sides of Tau and documented all of the large corals there. Every time they saw a coral that met the specifications of over two meters across, they would then notify people on the boat to take a waypoint. So we were able to map all of these very large parietes colonies. What's really exciting is our study revealed that we have several hundred colonies that are over six, seven feet in diameter. While measuring some of these large corals in the fall of 2019, the research team documented a coral head inside the National Park of American Samoa that is even larger than Big Mama. That coral is about 26 feet high, about 226 feet around, and is quite spectacular. It was phenomenal. It's um, incredibly healthy. It's like nothing I've ever seen before. So this now makes this the largest coral that we have in the territory and one of the largest corals in the world. This is something that is extraordinary in science. These corals are really slow growing, so this genus grows potentially one centimeter in a year. It really makes me uh, feel, you know, proud of our islands. We're trying to find where is that uniqueness from? Why, why our islands? The same species of Porites coral is also found in the nearby Ofu pools. This stunningly beautiful shallow lagoon provides scientists with a living laboratory to study the impacts of rising water temperatures on corals. It doesn't seem to bleach as often as other reefs around the world are doing. Those reefs can see changes of up to six degrees Celsius in a day, so those corals have had to adapt to such significant changes in temperature and it takes just one degree Celsius change in that temperature for a week to induce the stress response that we refer to as bleaching. Coral bleaching happens when water temperatures are too high 
and corals expel the symbiotic algae living in their tissues. These algae make up about 90% of a coral's food source, and without them, the corals eventually starve. They can survive like this for a short period of time. If the temperatures don't come back to the normal level, that's when you start seeing mortality. The reef in Ofu actually gets cut off from the rest of the ocean at low tide. And so there is a theory that we've contemplated for years that the reef has evolved over time to be better suited to warmer water. And maybe that's why it's more resilient. Record high temperatures between 2015 and 2017 led to severe bleaching on reefs across the Pacific Ocean, including in American Samoa. In many places, large swaths of centuries-old reefs were lost. We definitely did a lot better and didn't have as much mortality following that. What's so special about the reefs here in American Samoa that they're able to recover from repeated coral bleaching and other threats. By looking at those resilient reefs, we can determine better what species might be more suited for things like transplantation or other things that managers could do in the future to help coral reefs survive. Rising temperatures are just one of several climate change-related impacts that are threatening coral reefs worldwide. Climate change is caused by increased levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide, or CO2, brought on primarily by the burning of fossil fuels. Concentrations of CO2 in the atmosphere are continuously measured at four remote U.S. atmospheric baseline observatories, including one in American Samoa. The oldest one is on the slopes of Mauna Loa, that was founded in 1958 with the South Pole a couple months later. And then our other sister station up in Borough, Alaska in 1973. And then finally, American Samoa in 1974. We measure over 60 different chemical compounds. Everything from ones you hear every day, like carbon dioxide in the atmosphere to the ozone layer, to hydrocarbons, to CFCs, to oxygen and nitrogen in the atmosphere. When CO2 concentrations were first recorded in 1958, the average level of atmospheric CO2 was 315 parts per million. Since then, levels are increasing more rapidly than ever before in Earth's history. Last year, the average was 412 parts per million. So it has been going up rather quickly. The data collected at the observatories is sent to a home base in Boulder, Colorado, where it's analyzed. I take weekly glass flasks for the carbon cycle group here. Um, they measure the CO2 in the atmosphere. They have a machine here that measures it 24-7, 365 days a week. But we still want to take these glass samples, these flasks that I send back to Boulder weekly so they can measure them there make sure the machine is given right numbers, and then they can use more sensitive instruments they have out there as well to get a more precise reading. As levels of carbon dioxide increase in the atmosphere, the oceans also take up more CO2. It makes the oceans more acidic um, because the ocean absorbs that carbon dioxide and makes carbonic acid. And that's really bad news for corals and other organisms that secrete shells that are made out of calcium carbonate because it makes it harder for them to create their shells and their skeletons. The reefs in American Samoa are helping to block storm waves and tsunami waves that impact the shoreline. And so with ocean acidification, if corals slow down their growth, then they're not going to be able to keep up with sea level rise and that protective value is going to decline. And that's going to have big impacts for the human communities here on the island. To measure acidity levels in local waters, the NOAA Ocean Acidification Program teamed up with the National Marine Sanctuary and other agencies in 2019 and installed a monitoring buoy in Fangatele Bay. And that's going to give us 
real-time monitoring of key parameters of ocean acidification over time. American Samoa has the highest aragonite saturation levels measured in any of the 48 islands that are monitored through the National Coral Reef Monitoring Program in the Pacific. That aragonite is what is used by these organisms to build their skeletons. So having that readily available may mean that they're just able to battle some of these impacts a little bit better because they don't have to spend as much energy building their skeletons. I think having the MAP CO2 buoy here is going to help understand some of those processes better. Coupled with the biological data that we're collecting and the acoustic data that we're collecting, it should allow us to have a really robust picture, say in a decade, by putting all of that together and looking at whether there are changes in the coral communities, in the sound profiles, as we see changes in pH and carbon dioxide chemistry in the water in Fungatelli. So I don't want to paint too rosy of a picture. The reefs here are doing relatively well, but all of that could change very quickly. While the coral reefs in American Samoa have so far proven more resilient than others to coral bleaching and ocean acidification, parts of the island territory are already feeling the effects of another climate change impact, sea level rise. Over the last decade, sea levels have risen by more than seven inches, affecting the residents of Aunu, a small island just a short ferry ride away from Tutuila. It's beautiful. It really is peaceful and you know, the people are nice. Everyone's, you know, welcoming. Aunu is at the forefront of all the climate change impacts in American Samoa. The sea level rise is very obvious here. At certain times, waves wash over the roads and erode the shoreline as well as flood the power plant on the southwestern side of the island. Aonu is famous for its taro. In my opinion, not just me though, Aonu has the best taro anywhere in the Pacific. Taro is a type of starch. You would compare it to yams, and it's a source of food as well as income. In recent years, Salt water has been seeping into the fields from below. Local islander Sinale Taala is researching the problem. Some of the local farmers that I've talked to, they've known for quite a long while that the salt water is in the water. So I found like a measurement of salinity about two to six parts per thousand. And so I fear that sometime in the future, you know, the sea level is still rising, so it's going to be like a bigger problem because the taro cannot grow in salt water. I've planned to stay here for the rest of my life, but like, it looks like that's not going to be possible in maybe 20 years. And yeah, it, it is nerve wracking to think of you know, my home being gone sometime in the future, submerged in water because there is no place like home and I, I don't want to leave. <laughs> it is real and it is happening and time is running out. So for families in the South Pacific, it's just very, very important that the rest of the world knows what we're going through and what our children will have to go through. It's gonna impact so much more than just our shorelines. A whole way of life is at stake. We have an obligation to protect these areas, um, not only for the environment, but also for the people that need these areas to survive. 
Part of our job with the sanctuary is to try to make sure that those reefs are as resilient and healthy as possible, not just to protect the biodiversity and the reefs themselves, but also to protect those communities that are so vulnerable to climate change impacts and sea level rise. Coral reefs are an integral part of uh, life on the islands. It protects our shoreline, but also provides food for our families. Coral reefs are part of our rich cultural and tradition. Fa Samoa, or the Samoa way of living, values respect because we believe that God gave us the resource to protect and to use properly. And our hope is we continue to protect the marine ecosystem for uh, both current and future generations. Major funding for this program was provided by the Bachelor Foundation, encouraging people to preserve and protect America's underwater resources, and by the Arthur Vining Davis Foundations, strengthening America's future through education. Additional funding was provided by the William J. and Tina Rosenberg Foundation, and by the Do Unto Others Trust.